Texturing objects in Blender, or even in general, can be a pretty daunting task, especially when you have an object that requires multiple different textures in different areas. But what if I told you there was a way to separate all of these mini textures with one singular mask? So I'm going to go into the shading tab and um, just ignore all of these textures that I have because they really don't matter for this tutorial. The only thing that matters is this image and then the separate color node. So for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to delete both of these. And now you can see that all of the textures are just a gross mix of grass and rock, and there's no separation between anything. So I'm going to go into the texture paint tab and um, go to image new, and I'm just going to name it RGB mask. And the, the default width and height is going to be 1000 by 1000. I would recommend setting it to like anywhere above 3K um, just so it's not like pixelated. Um, keep the color black, everything else at the default, and hit OK. And now all you need to do is go back to the shading tab, find your RGB mask in this little image search thing. So it's going to be this third one because I've made multiples. So um, you can just grab this icon and drag it over to bring it into the node view. And now that it's there, I'm just going to bring in a separate color node and plug that into the separate color. OK, so now that we have that, I'm going to go back into the texture paint tab. So now you can see we're looking at our RGB mask on the object and anywhere that's black is going to be like a base image texture and any color that you add is going to be like an addition on top of it. So what I'm going to start off with is our green color, which is going to just be the grass on top of the rock. So I'll go through here and paint on the green. And if it's laggy, it's most likely because you either have a really high poly model or your image texture is just really high res. Um, there are ways to optimize this, but in this case, I just, I didn't really optimize it at all. Um, but there are ways to fix it. Okay, so now that the green is painted on, you want to go ahead and save the texture because Blender is horrible at saving these textures. And as soon as you close the program or try to render, it's just going to completely disappear. So make sure you save. I even suggest making a shortcut to where the image save is the same, like control S, the same as just saving the project. Back in the shading tab, um, nothing's happened because we haven't plugged in the green to anything yet. So you want to take the green socket and plug it into whatever factor of the mix shader that you need to. So in my case, it's this one. And now you see we have grass anywhere I painted the green. The next one I'm going to do is I want like some gray rock on the bottom here. So back in the texture paint tab, I'm going to use blue this time. And I'll just paint on anywhere that I want this like gray rock. Okay, and then save the texture. Back to the shading tab, I'm going to plug the blue socket in. And you can see it didn't really do a whole lot, but that's because we still have whatever our red is going to be, it's still mixing in with everything else except for the green. So now we need to do our red real quick. And in my case, the red is like this like sand texture. So I'm just going to go through here and um, like add a little bit of that sand along the grass. Okay, and then save, go back to the shading tab, and I'm going to plug in my red into here, which goes down to the factor. But now you see we have the gray rock down on the bottom. We have our sand anywhere I painted red. So yeah, this method of mixing the textures just gives you a much more realistic and detailed result than using like a noise factor or something like that. Um, so I really hope this helps you with creating your models and you have a nice day.